Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. And yes, it is true about the insanity there. Uh, We're going to go to um, the Twin Cities, and we're going to talk with Dr. John Lard. He's an interventional cardiologist, vice president, and chief medical officer of peripheral vascular health at Medtronics. Uh, Dr. Lard, welcome to Late Night Health. Well, thank you very much, Mark. It's great to be with you. I'm. What? First of all, let's uh, let's talk about what Medtronics is. Well, Medtronics is one of the largest medical device manufacturers in the world, uh, developing products for cardiovascular diseases, but also for many other conditions, including orthopedic problems, neurologic problems, kidney problems. Got it. Um, there's something called PAD, and this is PAD Awareness Month, which is a potentially deadly underlying condition. Do people know that they have this, or uh, they just die? And you know, the uh, during the autopsy, they say, "Oops, this was overlooked." Well, it's a very serious condition, but as you mentioned, it is often under recognized and under underdiagnosed. It affects uh, 8 to 12 million Americans and over 250 million people worldwide. And it's a very important problem because it's associated with an increased risk of heart attack, stroke, and premature death. Wow. Well, how do, how do I know if I have it? Well, peripheral artery disease is due to or buildup of plaque or blockages in the arteries to the legs and feet and it leads to a reduction in blood flow to the legs and feet, which can cause debilitating symptoms, as well as potentially increase the risk for premature death, as we talked about, and loss of limb. I uh, uh, remember a doctor uh, looking at my feet uh, and legs and ankles and said, you're fine, you don't have any swelling. Is that one of the uh, symptoms, Uh, a swelling, uh, maybe puffiness in the legs and the feet? Well, the most common symptom of peripheral artery disease is discomfort in the legs when one walks. It's often described as a cramping sensation or burning sensation, but may also just be experiences of fatigue or weakness in the legs. But as the disease progresses, patients can get pain in their legs and feet all of the time, particularly at nighttime. And in its most advanced stages, the problem can be so severe that it can lead to amputation or loss of limb or death or if, death yes or death um so if somebody has pain in their legs call their doc and go in and get checked yes i think uh, one thing that's underappreciated is that it's just an easy condition to diagnose once that people are aware so i tell my patients to make sure that they take their shoes and socks off when they go in to see their doctor so that he can examine their feet and can feel the pulses in their feet. Uh, But also there's some very simple tests that can be done to diagnose peripheral artery disease, including a test called the ankle brachial index, where blood blood pressure cuffs are placed in the lower leg and the blood pressure is measured in the leg compared to the arm blood pressure. Normally they should be about the same but when people develop peripheral artery disease, the pressures in their legs decrease in proportion to the severity of the problem. And that would also cause the swelling? Swelling can be a, a problem uh, of peripheral artery disease. It's a less of an important symptom. I think the more important things are the leg discomfort we talked about. Mm. Also, people can develop sores on their feet and toes that don't heal because of lack of blood flow, because blood flow is required to heal the tissues. And again, in the very advanced stages of peripheral artery disease, uh, there can be changes in the color of the skin uh, or blackening of the skin, and even what we call gangrene, where the tissue dies and turns black, which is a very ominous late finding in peripheral artery disease. It sounds like, uh, like bed sores. It uh, can be uh, like bed sores, but uh, usually on the kind of the heel or the toes, and um, and they can be you know like like bed sores, and that's a little ulceration or a little cavity that develops in the in the, the toe or the foot. 
I think most uh, cardiologists, uh, yeah, they examine the heart. They, they, you'll do a, um, a running treadmill test. You'll, you'll, they'll take pictures of the inside of your heart. Um, do most physicians look at legs? Do they consider that? Well, regrettably, not as many as we would like, unfortunately. And many patients come into the office and they don't get a careful examination. Uh, physicians may not even have their patients take their socks and shoes off and look at their feet. And that's part of the problem here, that uh, there's uh, an under-recognition of the problem in patients, but there's also a lack of awareness and and uh, lack of good history taking and physical examination on the physician side. Can you have a clear heart? I mean, everybody, I suppose, and I, I, I'm, I'm asking this, I suppose that everybody, say over the age of 50, some of us on this call are there, others, we have socks older than you. And, and, and that's, um, our, uh, our PR people who are, are watching and making sure that uh, we do a good job. Can your heart be clear, but your legs stuffed uh, uh, with a plaque? Well, usually if the pipes are bad in the basement, they're going to be bad elsewhere in the house, including uh, the attic. And that's why patients with peripheral artery disease often have concomitant blocked arteries in their heart and their neck arteries, the carotid arteries, which leads to an increased risk of heart attack and stroke. So if you have blockages in your heart arteries, you should be worried about the possibility of blockages in your leg arteries and vice versa. So if you go in and your doctor says, hey, you know, you have some blockage, uh, we're going to go in, we're going to do an angioplasty um, or other techniques uh, to uh, to help prolong life. Should the patient say, hey, what about my legs? Can we do something there? Yes, they can and they should. And I think it may just start with those simple screening tests that we talked about, the ankle brachial index test, or an ultrasound test of the arteries in the legs. And they can we can very readily see the blockages with ultrasound and we can determine the severity of the problem. So simple tests, a simple examination of the patient can really answer a lot of questions. Does uh, Medtronic have something that will um, help me if I have PAD? We certainly do. And, uh, you know, that's been a focus of mine over the years in my 30 plus years of uh, practice as a cardiovascular specialist, but also now in my uh, second uh, career as a Chief Medical Officer for Medtronic, where we develop products to help patients with peripheral artery disease. We can perform a minimally invasive procedures to open up the blocked arteries to the legs with use of uh, devices like balloons, uh, atherectomy devices, which are like roto-rooter devices that remove the plaque from the artery. We have drug-coated balloons where we open up the blockage in the artery and then deliver a medication into the wall of the artery to help the arteries from clogging back up. And sometimes we can place stents in the arteries to the legs to help uh, improve the blood flow. So there's a variety of techniques and things that we can employ to help uh, patients with peripheral artery disease. And it's often very gratifying and dramatic when we can open up these arteries for the patient. It's, uh, it's like you can go and run again and not have pain. Wow. Uh, our guest is Dr. Uh, John Laird. He's the, an interventional cardiologist, BP, and chief medical officer of peripheral vascular health at Medtronics. And we're talking about uh, PAD, uh, which is uh, uh, something that affects, you know, 12 million people or so. Uh, or more. Uh, we're going to take some time out. We'll come back as Late Night Health continues. We'll have a pretty picture of Dr. Uh, John on our website. I finally got him to smile. And um, uh, you can go to latenighthealth.com 
There's lots going on over there. All of our interviews and uh, information and pretty pictures of Daryl and me as well. From a long so time ago. Go. I'm sorry, what was that, Daryl? From a long time ago. From a long time ago, both of us. I actually have, I've got to get a new headshot. Anyway, uh, Late Night Health continues. Uh, don't go away, more coming up. Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids, and she can give you your life back too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing, and with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know, you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright here now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free, just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright here now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation. Call now, 323-424-7100, or visit them on the web at brighthear.com. If you're listening to Late Night Health right now, you're part of the growing target of baby boomers we're serving. Hi, I'm Daryl Wayne, producer of Late Night Health, inviting you to join the Late Night Health family. If you have any business targeting the growing boomer market, Late Night Health is the ideal advertising vehicle for you. From vitamins to insurance, alternative health to Western-style medicine, Late Night Health caters to the growing population of those over 40 years old. This vibrant demographic has expendable income to fight aging, purchase travel, take care of aging parents, or just have fun. Find out about the advertising opportunities with Late Night Health. Call us at 805-391-0308. That's 805-391-0308 or email us at info at latenighthealth.com. That's info at latenighthealth.com. Join Late Night Health as we empower people to take charge of their own health care. Call now at 805-391-0308. That's 805-391-0308. Late Night Health is proud of our partnership with the EBC, the Evolutionary Business Council. Check them out at ebcouncil.com. You're listening to Late Night Health with Mark Allen. The show continues in a moment. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Words are a critical aspect of success. How you get your point across is a crucial part of what makes anything sell. So do it right and hire a writer. Whether it's articles, blog posts, technical writings, website content, product descriptions, or ghost writing anything from a novel to a nonfiction book about your navel, contact Servet Hassan. If you want it to sell, write it right. Email Servet at Servet at ServetHassan.com. Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. Dr. John Laird is our uh, guest. He's an interventional cardiologist. We're talking about PAD. Um, Doctor, what are some of the risk factors of PAD? Well, that's a great question, Mark. Thanks very much for asking that. Um, There's two real big ones. One is smoking. Uh, Smokers are four times as likely to have peripheral artery disease as non-smokers. And so that's another gift to us from the tobacco companies. The other really big risk factor for PD is diabetes, which, uh, as you know, is really an epidemic uh, in this country. Mm-hmm. And diabetics are far more likely to end up with amputations because they develop a very insidious form of peripheral artery disease, which involves the smaller arteries of the lower leg and feet. And then the other risk factors are the typical ones for atherosclerosis, you know, high cholesterol in the blood, hypertension, obesity, uh, sedentary lifestyle, and, you know, genetic factors as well. So you have to pick your parents well. Uh, Yes, you do. Uh, I'm 
curious, uh, you know, you're over 35 yourself. What kind of exercise do, do you do? Because a lot of doctors say exercise, but they don't do what they tell patients. They, you know, as they're smoking a cigarette or a cigar. Yeah. Well, thanks for that question also, um, because exercise is really critically important for patients with peripheral artery disease, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Walking is really uh, the best exercise for patients with peripheral artery disease. In terms of what I do, I, I play golf and I walk on the golf course. I don't uh, ride a golf cart, I, and I carry my own golf bag. Uh, I ride the Peloton several times a week and then do some other exercises as well. But uh, it's really very, very important for PAD patients to get out there and walk at least uh, 20 minutes, you know, four, four days a week. Uh, be careful with your Peloton because uh, it, it may go away. <laughs> I hope uh, not. Yeah, I hope not either. Um, and diet, um, you know, lean foods, uh, avoid fat. Yes, the low cholesterol, low fat diet uh, is preferred. Uh, the optimal diet, uh, quite honestly, is a vegan diet or a plant-based diet. That's a little bit of a tougher one for patients to stick to. But low fat, low cholesterol is ideal. Mediterranean diet is really an excellent diet for cardiovascular patients. You know, fish, uh, fruit, uh, nuts, you know, olive oil, things like that. And uh, what are you having for dinner tonight, doctor? Salmon. <laughs> okay, that's good. Perhaps with one glass of wine. All right. Uh, red, I like red wine with my salmon. I Merlots are good. And actually, I've been getting into um, Old Vine Zinfandels. Um, what about medications and supplements? Uh, we're an integrative radio show, so we talk about you know both allopathic health an alternative health or what's been deemed alternative health. If I had a problem, I would first start with supplements rather than medications, because if you're taking uh, Lipitor and other drugs like that, you have to have your liver checked every two months or three months because it can eat away your liver. Any thoughts there? Well, I think there's some very well-proven uh, medications for patients with uh, peripheral artery disease that are straightforward and simple to take, such as a baby aspirin. One baby aspirin a day has been shown to reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke because it helps prevent blood clots from forming in the arteries of the heart and then the neck. Um, Certain medications, as you talked about, have been shown to be very beneficial for patients with peripheral artery disease, reducing the risk of heart attack and stroke. There are natural forms of statins, which I think can be quite beneficial. Red geek rice is a really a good alternative, um, and it's easy to, easy to find in the drug stores. Uh, there's other things that I like personally, like turmeric. Uh, for a variety of reasons for, from, a, from the natural supplement standpoint. Um, but more than anything, you know, staying away from tobacco smoke. I mean, if there's one thing that we could really say is most critically important for patients with cardiovascular disease is to quit smoking. I don't know how people can smoke. I, I don't get it. I remember trying when I was a teenager. One cigarette, I turned green, that was it. Um, and then I started hiding my mother's cigarettes. That never worked. Uh, and turmeric is really good as a, to eat, but you can't eat enough of it, so you do need a supplement on, on that. Um, what about things like meditation uh, to relax? Does, would that be a, a benefit for PAD patients? I think it's a benefit in general for cardiovascular health, um, for patients with heart disease, peripheral artery disease, and hypertension. Uh, I like to meditate myself. I think uh, meditation and you know mindfulness is you know very very beneficial. 
And I combine that with with exercise and, you know, good diet. And I think that's, uh, you know, very strong with improving your overall cardiovascular health. Uh, you mentioned that you golf. Uh, we're going into winter months. Uh, I know you can ice fish in Minneapolis uh, and in, in Minnesota. Can you play golf during the winter or what do you do during the winter months? Well, Trunk is based in Minneapolis. I, on the other hand, live in Napa Valley in California. Oh, well, you and get so to I play every day. <laughs> year round. That's right. All right. And I do play year round. Got One it. of the great benefits of being People don't tell me where they are. They, I get it. So we're <laughs> we're neighbors. We're neighbors. Um I don't think we mentioned this before. Did we talk about uh, the fact that African Americans have a higher incidence of PAD than um, other people, and people of color in general have a higher incidence of PAD? Yeah, that's a very good point, Mark. Thank you for bringing that up. There are some important health disparities with regards to peripheral artery disease, and people of color are far more likely to be impacted disproportionately by peripheral artery disease. Uh, blacks are four times more likely to end up with an amputation due to peripheral artery disease than, than non-African Americans. And that's due uh, somewhat to an increased uh, risk factor profile in black patients. They're more likely to have hypertension, uh, more likely to have diabetes, more likely to have kidney disease but also they're less likely to be offered some of the beneficial treatments that there are, are out there for artery disease. And they don't seem to have the education, I mean, uh, about PAD and other health issues. Yeah, there's, uh, as we've talked about, there's a real under awareness of peripheral disease in general across the spectrum of of uh, people in the U.S. and around the world, but certainly there's socioeconomic and regional factors in play too in terms of PAD awareness. Doctor, we're out of time. I really appreciate your uh, spending some time and enlightening us about PAD, uh, peripheral, um, uh, uh, P about PAD, and um, uh, our guest has been uh, John Lard. He's the Chief Medical Officer of Peripheral Vascular Health at Medtronics, and uh, we've been talking to him. Uh, Daryl, thank you very much for everything you do each week. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. And I thank you for watching at home or listening at home. Uh, join us at LateNightHealth.com. That's LateNightHealth. Dot com. Have a good week, everybody. Have a great week. Most importantly, have a healthy week. And as Dr. John said, get out there and do a walk. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now. You're clear. I've got a little cleanup to do uh, on the end and the beginning. And aside from that, I think yeah. it went pretty well. Uh, we did have a little uh, uh, breakup uh, in, the, in the second half of this interview. And so I may have to cut a couple of sentences if there's a a word that just is garbled and doesn't make any sense, but uh, it won't uh, impede the, the message, the meaning of what's uh, being recorded. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, sorry, my internet is a little bit sketchy out here in Napa Valley, and uh, apologize if there was some technical things on my end. Yeah, just the second half of the, the second uh, portion. So, uh, Got it. there's as I'm, I'm listening, I'm listening for edit points in and out, whether I can solve it or whether we need to retake it. At this point, we don't have to retake it. I'm fine. Well, I thank you uh, all um, for that. Um, I think Medtronics has to up, up uh, John's uh, internet. Come on, guys. Yeah. Right? Well, you talk to HR about that. Yeah, I think you <laughs> should. Right? Yeah. Um, uh, have a great day, uh, all of you, uh, and uh, thank you very much. John, uh, try an old vine uh, Zinfandel. And, um, I've had a few of those in my day. 